What's up everybody? Brian here from Working Class Fishing. Today we're tossing some really cool beads up here at the R&T lab. Make sure you stay tuned. You're not going to want to miss any of them. So I want to talk a little bit about the beads I'm using today. So Scott Weaver, owner of Dylan Rush Outfitters, makes all kinds of soft plastics. Now you know that John, the other half of Working Class Fishing, also did make soft plastics. He decided that he was going to venture into the whole fly fishing category, which is totally cool because John has just as much talent with soft plastics making as he does fly tying uh, and, and vice versa. So I go to Scott for all of my soft plastics now. And the reason why I go to him is number one, he's local. Number two, he's been super helpful. He's put me on fish. He's put me with people that can teach me how to catch fish more effectively using the bead fishing technique. He's been very reasonable. Last year, my car got broke into. I lost my beads that I had bought from him, and he sent me this for the same price as uh, just to help me replace it. And I wish I could have found the other beads, but unfortunately, I didn't. Fortunately enough, Scott was a good enough friend to hook me up. So with that kind of customer service, you, you tend to get a, a really good loyalty going. Now let, let's crack open this, this box here. This is just an absolutely dynamite setup of beads. So Scott makes all of these beads. His beads are all linked together just like they come out of the mold. He's got all kinds of different colors. Color we use today is called the goat. That's this one here. Now he's got all these other colors here. Uh, any one of these ones like these peach colors, pink colors, everything else, they're meant to mimic a salmon egg. That's what they're meant to mimic or a fish egg. It, in our neck of the woods it's a salmon egg. But Basically, you're only throwing this out there. It's just a little piece of soft plastic. Now, you can put scent on it. I put a little bit of scent on today. I put a little bit of anise, which really turns on trout. These work out really good. So the way that I like to rig these is that I use a egg loop hook, okay? Um, and you can buy pre-tied egg loops or you can um, tie them yourself. It's all up to you. But I decided to use a number four. Uh, number four seems to be a pretty good universal size uh, for a lot of the fish that I go for. Now you could go to a six. Six is gonna probably be about as small as you wanna go unless you're fishing for smaller stalker trout, then you could go with an eight. Uh, a lot of times though, uh, with this whole bead fishing method, the, the idea behind it is, is that you actually go for a little bit bigger fish like steelhead. Now, you can use beads on trout, and I was using a small eight millimeter bead, but basically what I'm doing is I'm using uh, uh, what we call an egg loop, and this is a gamakatsu number four hook. Sizing your hook to your bead is important. There's some guys that'll run like a, a four and then a six, and they'll run two beads, and they'll put them like 24 inches apart. Some guys will actually tie a second egg, uh, second hook up here. If you're familiar with like a walleye walker rig or something like that, or like even a kokanee rig, where you have two hooks where you rig your night crawler, basically you put a bead in between here and you, maybe you even put one up here. It's an old classic drift rig with the two hooks set up. We can fish these under a float, we can drift fish them, whatever else. So the basic premise of putting one of these beads on. Now, some of them come pre-punched and I am not gonna talk about the pre-punched products because I only buy Scott's products uh, because I have brand loyalty to Scott. But the pre-punched ones will accept these types of tea pegs. Now, you can also tie uni knots on the actual main line uh, if you don't wanna use the tea pegs. I like the tea pegs, they're quick, easy, and effective. They do hold the bead in place even after it's been thrashed quite a bit. So what we do, is you'll see that on this here, if I can get it close enough and the camera will focus, there's a little wire piece there that, that comes out. And we got a little pull handle here. What I'm gonna do is I'm going to grab that T-peg and I've looped that line through and I just basically pull that line loop through and it puts the T-peg right on there. Like I said, you can also tie like uh, a bead in here. There's there's a lot of guys that prefer to do that. I like I said, I'm a T pig. Next thing that I like to do is typically I'll take another hook that's barbed 
Now I'll get one out here because I don't have another one here. This one is, well, this, the, the hook that it's on is barbed itself, but I'm gonna just grab a separate one to show you. So I'm gonna grab one of my uh, trout magnet jigs or jig heads because some of these have the barb on. And what I like to do with that is first I'm going to grab a bead, whichever one I want to rig. So let's say I want to rig this orange one. Now I'm going to take one of the little guys here, one of the little eight millimeter beads. Now hook that through, string this down. And then once I do that, I'm going to hook that around just like that. And now I'm going to thread this through right here. And you'll see how it pulls the line through. So you could probably get like a uh, leather sewing needle or something like that and actually do that or even just a standard sewing needle. I think a leather sewing needle has a lot larger eye on it. So once you do that, now that I have my hook all set up and ready to go, all I'm going to do is I'm going to slide my bead down. Make sure you get rid of that little piece of uh, stuff there. Okay. Slide my bead down. I'm going to press my bead over the top of that peg until that peg seats in the bead. Now, when you're setting it up for steelhead, you want to have two to three finger lengths in between the hook, the, the eye of the hook, and the bead. You can go two and a half to three, and it works out good. For the trout in here, because they were kind of nippy today, I, I went a lot closer. I only went like one finger length. And then all we have to do is we can connect it to our swivel. So you'd want to have a swivel in line and you connect that. And if you're drift fishing, obviously you would run a tag line for like a piece of weight or to tie a weight off to, or you could also do some different stuff with that. So that's your basic, basic, basic bead rigging. And if we wanted to, we could tie this on and go out and fish it. Uh, I'm going to just tuck it back into my box here and it'll be ready to go for the next time I want to go fishing. So that's how you rig a bead. Good one. He really drilled that bead. I really got my drag that loose, or is this just that big of a fish? Oh, big fish, yeah. He chowed it. Chow, chow, chow. Well, good morning. Right. So, here you have it. The soft bead came up and grabbed it right there at the hook. Got a barbless hook in here, but he ate it pretty deep. We're not going to handle him. There we go. Beautiful, beautiful rainbow trout. So, thanks for playing, buddy. All right, we're going to bushwhack out onto this other side of where that spill out is where we're fishing. I'm going to see if changing my angle works out a little better. Let's see. Just uh, testing the territory here, seeing if we got a solid place to get out on these fish at. I am wearing waders, so I'm not too timid. Just don't want to go in over my head if it's like a bog. All right. Wading safety is very, very important, of course. So we got a little outflow here. See what happens.
I'm just letting the current carry it, and I have my spool open here, my bale, I should say. I'm just kind of drifting it down to where I think those fish might sit. Got one. Fish on. Right there at the end of the drift, guys. Oh, man, it's a big one. Oh, wow. This is going to be a good one. Back up this current. I got to tighten up my drag even. Yep, he even hung up in the stick. Look at that, guys. Oh, nice little trout. Very nice. Here we go. Okay. Oh, maybe not that small. Look at that. Zoom out there. Got it right in the corner of the mouth. Let's, uh, let's pop that free. Fish on right down there at the end of the uh, spillway. Looks like we. Man, this is a horse, too. Jeez, a little wheeze. Put my rod. <laughs> That's a horse of a fish, whatever it is. Look at my rod. Jeez. Maybe it's also just the combined current, too. Maybe we got the uh, Lake Ness monster here. Oh, come on, dude. Oh, no, we got a huge trout. Like steelhead. Yeah. It's like probably the biggest freaking trout. Oh, my God. <laughs> I think I got the biggest trout in the lake here. Will it even fit in the net? Is the question. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. <laughs> wow. Um, yeah. That, that's uh, PB. Easily. Easily. Easily PB. I don't even know what to say at this point. That, that's a huge fish. Yeah. All right, dude. Let's let somebody else have fun with you. off he goes. Jeez Louise. Uh, that filled the net and then some. Look at him. And he's like, yeah. Guess what? I almost broke your rod. See you later, buddy. Hey, hope you enjoyed today's video. If you did, make sure that you like, comment, and subscribe. Also, make sure to slide over to Instagram and follow us at Working Class Fishing. Until next time, 